Today we're tackling one of Chicago's iconic food dishes, and even though it's Italian, it's not pizza. For the record, if I did have to pick a city's pizza style, it would be Detroit style pizza all the way. Pizza discussions aside, today is all about the Chicago style Italian beef sandwich. And this may not look too pretty right now, but let me just roll the next clip. Roasted beef warmed in au jus before being stuffed in bread, dipped again in the au jus, and then adding sweet or hot peppers. I've been watching way too many mouthwatering videos of this sandwich in my research for this video. But now, it's my time to enjoy the Italian beef sandwich, and it's time for you guys to watch a mouthwatering video. Before we hop into the recipe though, let's talk about what makes Chicago style, Chicago style. Also, now that I'm editing this, I'm realizing there's quite a bit to go through, so I'll give you guys a little table of contents of what you can expect. So based on my research, which included polling some Chicago Redditors, the Chicago style Italian beef sandwich is categorized by the following. Number one is a beef roast braised with Italian spices for several hours. That roast beef is then thinly sliced and warmed in the au jus before being put on the serving vessel. That serving vessel is usually a sturdy long bread roll and it can be ordered dry, wet, or dipped. More on that later. It is then usually topped with sweet peppers or hot peppers, also known as Italian giardinara. Other topping variations can include the Italian combo. Some people like to add cheese. Some people like to add red sauce. And I have some great news for you. Well, and me too. I'm gonna try all these different variations because I feel like you just gotta. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make an Italian beef video, you gotta try all the different variations out there. But now that we have those basics down and out of the way, it's time to make this thing, and I will point down the important techniques that I'm using along the way to what makes this such a great sandwich. The first thing that we have to do is braise our beef. I'm using an eye of round roast here, which is a classic cut used for roast beef from the deli. Though places like Al's in Chicago will use the top sirloin butt. Both of these cuts work really well for slicing because they are fairly lean. Though if you wanted to use something at home like a chuck roast or a lunny broil, that would work well too. Make sure you preheat your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius, but now we are going to liberally salt and pepper the roast to prepare it for browning. You're gonna add a thin layer of oil to a large Dutch oven over high heat. When the oil is hot, add the beef and brown it on all sides, creating those delicious flavor compounds through the Maillard reaction. Once it's browned on all sides, just remove the roast and set it aside on a plate and set that heat down to medium. Now you're gonna add in some smashed garlic cloves and the spice rub to the fond created from browning the roast. I did wanna mention how I came up with this spice mix. So I was watching this video with Al make his beef and he did the classic, I could tell ya, but I'd have to kill ya thing. And whatever, different discussion. But in that video, I saw a close up of the spice mix and it was clearly coriander and fennel seed. Now it's a red mix, so I'm obviously missing a couple. But then I found this 1992 video when Bobby Flay visited Al, and in that video he mentions that he uses oregano and paprika. So I put those two and two together with salt and pepper to come up with my spice mix, and I guarantee you it's probably pretty damn close to what Al uses. And even if it's not, one or two spices isn't gonna make or break this dish. It's a lot more about the techniques that you're using throughout the process that are gonna hold a lot more weight in that final product. Anyway, let's get back to the preparation. You're gonna saute the spice mix and garlic for about one to two minutes until it's fragrant, being careful not to burn the spices. Then you're gonna add in some beef stock and water to create our braising liquid, which is also gonna serve as our au jus to dip the beef in later. Add the brown beef roast to the liquid, and the liquid should come up to at least half the way up the beef. If it's not, just add more water or beef stock. Now before putting this in the oven, we are going to prepare a parchment paper lid. Also try saying that fast, I messed up like 16 times. This is a tip I picked up from Ruhlman's 20, and it's just a circular piece of parchment paper with a hole cut in the middle, but it serves a very important purpose. 
If we cover the Dutch oven with the lid on, the liquid would boil and the food would cook at a hotter temperature. But if we use a parchment paper lid, the water will not boil, the food will cook gentler, and also reduce that cooking liquid. The result? That au jus flavor is going to be intensified, which is very important when we go to dip this sandwich. Move the beef to the oven and let it braise for two and a half hours. Then you're gonna flip the beef roast, and you can remove that parchment paper lid, and let it braise for another hour and a half. You can go longer if you want to. Remove the roast from the oven and wrap it in plastic film to move to the fridge to rest for at least one hour. And this is a very important step here. So, so resting is gonna allow the proteins to set for better slicing. And that plastic film that we put on it isn't going to allow any water vapor to escape, so it's gonna keep our beef moister. I let mine rest for about three to four hours so it would be ready for dinner, but if you wanted to make this ahead of time, you could probably let it go for up to a day in the fridge if you wanted to. And we also want to store that braising liquid as well. You can transfer it to a container like I did in these jars, or you can just keep it in the Dutch oven until you are ready to use it. And this is really kind of the crown jewel of that Chicago style Italian beef. It's keeping that nice seasoned au jus together that it's just gonna give us drippingly good flavor for that beef. Once the beef has rested, thinly slice the roast by using an electronic slicer for best results. Luckily, I do have access to one, but if you don't, just try to slice it as thinly as you can with a knife. The thinner, the better. I know it's not gonna get quite as good as an electronic slicer, but you gotta work with what you can sometimes. And just look at this beef coming out the slicer, better than any roast beef that you could buy at the deli. And now it's time to warm this beef up. So you can heat the au jus over a medium low heat until it's 140 degrees Fahrenheit or about 60 degrees Celsius. And this was a tip I picked up from a Serious Eats article where he tested the ideal temperature for heating up your sliced beef. Now before we actually prepare a sandwich, I wanna talk about the bread and the toppings because there's kind of a lot to unpack here. For the bread, you're gonna need something sturdy that is gonna be able to hold up and soak up those juices. So I picked up two varieties of hoagie slash sub rolls, whatever you call them in your region. So I've got these food service ones which are soft and then I have these Martin's ones that are really soft. And I did a little au jus test where I ladled the broth over both the bread varieties to see which one held up better. So I want something that's gonna soak up the broth but still be structurally intact. This is a sloppy sandwich, but it should still have a structural component to it. And the bread is a big choice of why that's gonna work. So in the end, I decided to use these food service hoagie rolls. Not sure who makes them, it literally just says food service on it. In Chicago though, the Toronto bread rolls are a popular pick, but whatever you have, just make sure it holds up well to that au jus, or you may not be able to dip it. So let's try to quickly talk here about toppings, because like I said, there's kind of a lot to unpack. So the most basic is going to be sweet peppers or hot peppers. Sweet peppers being just bell peppers that are cooked down in butter or oil. And then hot peppers is usually gonna be an Italian giardinara. So for my Italian giardinara, I took some lacto-fermented giardinara, and this is from my video, which I'll link in the description if you wanted to. But basically, this is just a basic lacto-fermented pickle using the Noma method. And then all I'm gonna do is just add some oil to this to make it into that Italian-style giardinara. So now that we have those basic toppings out of the way, let's talk about how you order slash prepare this sandwich. So your first decision is do you want it dry, wet, or dipped? Dry means the beef is just placed from the au jus right into the sandwich. Wet means an extra ladle of au jus is added. Dipped means you pop the entire sandwich in that au jus. Then your next option is do you want it sweet or do you want it hot? Sweet meaning the bell peppers, hot meaning that giardinara, or you can get both. All right, I swear we're almost done with toppings. Just hold with me for like 30 more seconds. Some Redditors from Chicago were telling me that some places will put red sauce or mozzarella on them, and they kept telling me about this one specific thing called the Italian combo. So the Italian combo is literally that hoagie roll, then you stuff in an Italian sausage that has been dipped in au jus, then you put your Italian beef over top, and then you get the hot and the sweet peppers, whatever you want. All right, so my plan of attack for these taste tests is going to be comparing dry, wet, and dipped, and then I'm gonna add sweet and hot peppers. I just know that's what I like. 
And then after we try those, we're definitely coming back and we're trying an Italian combo because it, it just sounds like something you gotta do. If you're gonna make an Italian beef sandwich, you gotta go for that Italian beef combo. All right, but anyway, we made it through. Enough about toppings. Back to the recipe and on to the taste test. I'm so ready to devour this thing. I got a smile taking over my face. Feeling the sunshine all over the place. If it's for real, you gon' feel it in your soul. If it's for real, you gon' feel it in your bones. Clapping my hands when I walk down the street. I got a rhythm, got a skip in my feet. If it's for real, All right guys, so we're here for taste test number one. We have the classic, the dry version. We have the wet, which is gonna be one ladle, and then we have the dipped sandwich. And I can kind of tell right now that they're all actually really juicy already, because they, when you put them in this wrapping paper, they kind of steam and get really nice. But anyway, we're gonna give it a try, see which level of juiciness we like best, and then after we try these, we're coming back for that Italian combo. All right, wait, which one? Even if you get it dry, you're getting a lot of juice. Dry, but dipped in the, in the jus. Well, all, yeah, all the, all the beef are dipped in the jus. Okay. Oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Ooh, man. Still incredibly juicy. I mean, even if it's just dipped dry bun, yeah, for being called dry. Dry, so juicy. So mm. much flavor. Mm. How do you like that jardinara in there? Oh, so good. Not super spicy on that jardinara. I just added like, I think three red hot chilies. Yeah, I'm not a big spice guy and that's not spicy at all. But that really balances well. The acid really mm -hmm. cuts through all that fat that yeah. you're getting from the, the liquid itself. Take a little palate cleanser. Oh yeah. So good though. That's everything I could ever want in a in an Italian wet beef roll. It's great. And I'm not gonna lie, I really like this one has a lot of beef in it. <laughs> like it's a probably it's, <laughs> it's pretty a, hefty. It's a big boy. So this is one ladle, or supposedly what they would call wet. This bottom bun's really juicy. Mm. Mm. The juiciness levels are pretty, I mean this one definitely has more, but they're, they're kind of similar. Yeah. But still, great flavor all the way through. Did that uh, tell? Oh yeah. Sweet peppers are also really nice in there too, when you get like a little bite of one. It kind of balances really well. I like having them both, like, I know a lot of people say sweet or hot, but I'm definitely grabbing both every time. I'm not gonna pick one or the other. Ready for the Big Dipper? <laughs> yeah. I'm eyeing it up. Oh boy. This is the dip, and you can clearly see that bun got really wet up here. That's real juicy. And this is also the bread choice. The, that other roll that I got definitely would not have held up well to the juice. So I'm glad I picked this one. Oh, yeah, baby. That is an incredible amount of juice. I mean, look at that. That's, That's really so soaked cool. in there. <laughs> look at that. Dead screen. Did it focus? And like I've been saying, I've literally watched so many videos of people making and eating these that. It's finally here, now I get to try. Just with one bite left, I mean. I know, <laughs> might as well go for it. One thing I would like more of is the, what is this called? The jardinara? Yeah, yeah I, I wish I'd put a little more on there. Yeah, I think I went a tiny bit too light on it. We'll, we'll hit it for the next one. Yeah. There's only one thing left to do. <laughs> the ultra big boy. The Italian <laughs> combo. I mean, whatever guy thought you needed an extra. Yeah, well, why, would, why would you need? Why would you need an incredible mop of Italian beef just tossed on an even meatier sausage? Like, yeah. that's that's America. <laughs> but we are gonna try it. We'll be back in one second. So if you can't see, we've got the Italian sausage underneath there, 
and load it up with beef. <clears throat> I think we've each eaten a pound of Italian beef. That's not even very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy about it. Oh, wait, call oh, that cross half. section. Just beef. <laughs> just, just beef. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sausage right here, beef and all the other stuff as normal. Ooh, we forgot to give it a ladle though. Let's give it a ladle. Oh yeah. Italian combo, here we go. I mean, it's beefy. Oh yeah. You almost need more jardinara to help cut through all that beef yeah. in there. The good thing is you can distinguish the flavors between the roast beef and then the sausage, but it still is a whole lot of beef in one bite. I don't think there's any benefit that you get having them together. You no, know? I would honestly, if like I, was gonna, I would rather just have a sausage, like a half of a sausage, yeah. and then a half of a roast beef. Yeah. But I definitely think the best technique is the ladle. Yeah. Because you get the juice on the top, but it doesn't soak up the bottom, so it falls apart. So you have a, still have a sturdy foundation. Oh yeah. But you get that extra juiciness that you wouldn't get from the quote unquote dry. I think ordering it wet would be like the right amount that I would like. Yeah. Pretty successful taste test. Oh, so Pretty successful good. Chicago Italian beef. It's not a quick recipe, but if you got the time, you've got the tools, I would definitely give it a shot and go make it. It's definitely worth it. That's gonna wrap it up for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we will catch you in the next one. Peace. Well, let's get another one. Oh my gosh, that was so much. I don't know. I am not that full. I don't know. I, got, I think I'm gonna go have some of that leftover chicken. It was very poundable. Yeah, no, I, I could just shove that meat in my face, no problem. <laughs>